In this nugget, we'll explore earned value analysis. Earned value analysis is probably one of the most powerful, important tools you have in your project manager's toolkit. Unfortunately, earned value analysis is probably one of the most misunderstood and least used tools in the project manager's toolkit. The value of earned value management is that it combines scope, time, and budget together to give you a picture of total project performance. Often when people talk about projects, they simply say, is the project on time? And that's an important consideration. We want our projects to deliver on time. But on time at all costs, on time without regard to quality, on time without regard to functionality, no. Again, same applies to being on budget. We want our projects to complete on budget. But again, at all expenses, does it matter whether we're on budget without any regard for being on schedule, without any regard for delivering on the right functionality? And again, the answer is no. So although the most common measures are time and budget, we need to ensure that we have scope and the total project picture involved in our analysis as well. So we put that into a simple little grid where we have time, we have dollars, and we have scope. And we start to do an analysis on it. If we deliver our project on time, give it a tick box, on budget, tick box, and on scope, that's obviously exactly what we want to do as a project manager. But often, projects don't deliver exactly on time, on budget, to project specifications, to scope. So what happens if we are ahead of time? Is that a good thing? And you may say, yes, of course that's a good thing. Being ahead of time is wonderful. But is it? If it's ahead of time and under budget, is that a good thing? And conceptually, it sounds like a perfect thing. We're ahead of time. The project is delivering early. We're not spending near as much money on the project as we had anticipated, so we're going in under budget. It sounds like a very good thing, and most likely is, but what about scope? Are we delivering the right product? Are we simply ahead of time because we've missed some scope functionality? Are we simply ahead of time because we're not delivering everything that we promised to deliver? And therefore, again, because we're not delivering everything we promised to deliver, potentially, again, we're ahead of time but under budget. So what about another scenario? If we're ahead of time and over budget, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It depends. If you're ahead of time and ahead of budget and delivering exactly the scope, that may be a really good thing. You're ahead of time because you've added an extra resource to the project team. You're ahead of budget because you've added an extra resource to the project team, but you're delivering exactly everything according to scope. So again, it varies. You need to combine the scope, the time, the budget together to get the total project performance. If we're behind schedule and over budget, I can almost tell you that is a bad thing. I probably don't need earned value analysis to say that a project that is behind schedule, spending more than it should, is probably in a bad situation. It, there's probably not a scenario that I can come up with where I can give you an example. Well, well, that is still a good thing that we're delivering exactly what the customer wanted because we're still, we're behind schedule, we're spending more money. So that is probably the one scenario where without earned value analysis, I can simply say it's a bad thing. But if we're behind schedule and we're under budget, again, I don't know what the answer is. If we're behind schedule and we're under budget, sounds like it's a bad thing. Sounds like the business is not going to be too, too happy. But if we're still delivering what we should be delivering based on that amount of time and that amount of budget, i.e., we're behind schedule and we're under budget simply because we're missing a team member from our project team, therefore work is not being completed as fast as, as anticipated, therefore not spending as much money as anticipated, 
it may not be that bad a thing. It simply means the project may be a little bit late, but we're still going to deliver exactly the functionality that the business is looking for. So again, earned value analysis combines the scope, the time, the budget together, and allows us to do a more complete analysis and simply determining whether we're in good shape or bad shape based on the single measure of time or the single measure of budget. Or what a lot of project managers do, combine time and budget together. But as we can see from this example, combining time and budget together still isn't enough. There was only two scenarios where I could come up with an absolute unilateral decision where we're exactly on time, exactly on budget, and exactly on scope. I don't need earned value to tell me that's a good thing. The other apps, the absolute opposite scenario is we're behind schedule, we're spending more money than we should, I don't need earned value to tell me whether that is a good or a bad thing. But all of the other plus or minus scenarios, typically the situation virtually every project is going to be in, I have two facts, but I don't have the total project performance picture. That's where earned value analysis is going to come into play. Hopefully by that introduction, I have you excited and interested in earned value, convinced that it is the right tool to be using for project delivery, now, unfortunately, I have to take you through a series of terms to help you understand what earned value is and how earned value is used, applied, and calculated. There are a large number of terms. These terms have some funny acronyms. And often, these terms and the acronyms and the formulas we're going to discuss in just a moment will turn a lot of people off from earned value in that it's just a series of mathematical computations that it really doesn't belong in the project manager's toolkit. That's absolutely not the case. Bear with these terms. They are part of the earned value process. They will help define what earned value is, but don't get hung up on the exact terms themselves or, for that matter, how some of the formulas are derived. There has to be a leap of faith in earned value, and I hate to say this, but yes, there has to be a leap of faith in earned value that, okay, it's a proven process. I understand how it works. No different than the proven process that says there are 12 inches in a foot. We don't question why it's 12 inches. We don't question how long an inch is. We don't question that there's three feet in a yard. It's simply a proven fact that we apply in everyday life. I ask you to have the same approach to earned value, that these termed planned value, earned value, actual cost are simple facts that are part of the earned value process and if properly applied are going to allow you to successfully measure your project success the same way if you properly apply the number of inches in a foot and the number of feet in a yard it's going to allow you to properly measure your children's height or the size of your living room to buy new carpet or whatever the case is going to be so again the terms if you're applying for the PMP which I'm assuming is one of the reasons you're taking this nugget series you will need to memorize these terms. You will need to memorize what the letters PV, what the letters BAC stand for. You will need to be able to understand the application of these. So please do memorize this. One of the few areas in the PMP itself that memorization is required. So here are the terms. PV, planned value. It's the original baseline. It's the original baseline that you put together when you developed your project plan, and it's the original baseline plus all approved changes as changes are processed on your project. So there's nothing magical about PV. It's planned value. It's the original baseline plus approved changes directly from your project plan. The EV, the earned value, is probably the one aspect to earned value or earned value analysis that causes the most problem. It's what was actually done done. The EV calculation, the EV numbers for the earned value system equates to at this point in time on our project, at the three month point in our project, what work was actually done and how much would this work have actually cost 
had we completed it exactly according to plan. Now I just ask you to keep that thought in mind. Earned value is at month three in our project. It's what work was actually done and what that work would cost if everything had happened according to plan. And we'll come back and, and provide more definition of that as we go through. The difference between earned value and the plan is maybe a different resource worked on the task. That resource cost $5 more an hour. The variation is what it was actually done had it been done according to plan. Or the task was originally scheduled to take 40 hours and it took 46 hours. It's the work that was actually done, but what it would cost had it been done at the 40 hour level rather than the 46. So there is, there is an element, there, this is where the leap of faith applies in earned value, is trusting the EV number is what was actually done. The actual cost is what it really cost. So if we spent more time on the task, 45 hours rather than 40, if we spent $10 more an hour for the resource because we get a different resource, that's what the AC number is, what it actually cost. These three values for the earned value process are literally ongoing month in, month out, week in, week out on our project. So at day one on our project, we have PV, EV, and AC values. At month one on the project, at month two, at month three, at month four, we have PV, EV, and AC values for our project. Our remaining four definitions are all at completions. So budget at completion, this is the total project budget. Again, based on the baseline. The difference being the PV is the total baseline at month six, at month seven, at month eight. The BAC is just the total budget for the project. The EAC, the estimate at the completion, is our current forecast. So based on the information we now know, the project is not going to cost $50,000 to complete. The project is going to cost $60,000 to complete. The estimate to complete is the difference between what our current forecast is and what the work done to date is. So this is the remaining work. And finally, the variance at completion is just that. It's the variance. It's the difference between the total budget and what our current forecast is going to be. It's going to be how much over or how much underspent our project is going to be on completion based on the information we've calculated from earned value. So again, please don't let these funny acronyms throw you off. Most of these acronyms, PV, AC, BAC, EAC, ETC, VAC, are all very straightforward, very easy to apply, very easy to understand. The one aspect of earned value that will cause you some grief until you get used to the process is the EV value. What was actually done? At month three in the project, we plan to have these six tasks done. What have we actually completed at month three in the project? We've completed five of the six tasks originally planned. So we've completed five of the original six tasks, but with a 10% overrun. The EV value is going to be the five tasks at the original price, not at the 10% overrun. The 10% overrun is covered in the AC value. EV is what was actually done at the original budgeted value. AC address any cost overruns that are associated with the work. If memorizing all of those terms, PV, AC, EAC isn't enough, unfortunately now I have to ask you to memorize some calculations as well, some formulas. And again, this is all important to make earned value work. Bear with me for just a couple more minutes. We'll get through these calculations, these formulas. I'll give you a few tricks and tips on how to remember all of this, how to make it easy to remember this for getting into the PMP exam and, and passing the PMP. And then more importantly, I'll show you this in action and really show you the value of what earned value does and how it's going to help you be more effective as a project manager. Before we get into the calculations, we need to review the facts about your project that you already know. 
we know PV. We know the original baseline. We know EV, or at least we determine EV from our project schedule, from our work done. We know the AC. Again, we get that from the work completed from our project schedule, and we know our BC, our total project picture. So this is the information we either know or we can easily derive from our project schedule, from our Microsoft project plan on the day in, day out, week in, week out basis of delivering our project. Now we have one, two, three, six formulas that again, you need to memorize these formulas. You will need to be able to put these formulas down and apply these formulas on the PMP exam. So let's get into it and look at the formulas. The first formula is the cost variance. CV equals EV, earned value, minus AC. And again, this is where I ask you to believe in the formulas. There are 12 inches in a foot. The cost variance formula is CV equals EV minus AC. The schedule variance formula, SV equals EV minus PV. The cost performance indicator, CPI, is EV over divided by AC. The schedule performance indicator is SPI, is your earned value over the present value. And then finally, our last two, and you'll notice these come in pairs. We have a pair of cost variances, a pair of performance indicators, and a pair of estimate or at completions, where EAC is our BAC over our CPI. So we're actually using one of our derived values as part of this formula. So first we calculate the CPI, and then we use it to determine the estimate at completion. And then finally, the schedule at completion is the SAC, and I've added a new term in here, which is I'm calling the original date. There, there does not seem to be an acronym that I can find in the EV literature for this, is the original targeted project end date. And it's not going to be in terms of a calendar today, but it's going to be in terms of the elapsed time for the project over your SPI. So again, yes, six formulas that you have to memorize, but it's not that bad. They come in pairs. You have the two variance indicators, you have the two performance indicators, and you have your two at completion values. EV minus AC, EV minus PV. There's a trend. EV is at the front. Performance indicators, EV over AC, EV over PAV. Again, there's a trend. EV is at the beginning. You're at completions. They both are divided by your performance indicators. I'll review this in the next slide in terms of the tricks to remember this. To aid in the memorization of all of this information, here's a few tricks. EV, earned value, comes first in four of the six formulas. If it's a variance formula, it's always EV minus something. And I'll come to the something in just a second. If it's a performance indicator, it's always EV over something. So again, EV comes first in four of the six formulas. If it's the variance formulas, it's EV minus. If it's a performance indicator, it's EV over. So what are the somethings? If you're doing a cost variance, or if you're doing a cost performance indicator, it's over AC. So cost is always AC. Schedule is always PV. So if you remember that, earned value comes first. Variance is always EV minus. Performance indicators is always EV over. And it's EV minus AC. If it's a cost variance, it's EV over AC if it's a cost performance indicator. So if you can remember those few tricks, EV comes first, variance is always EV minus, performance indicators is always EV over. And the something, the minus, the over, if it's a cost, it's AC, actual cost, cost. Schedule doesn't have the same direct relationship. So again, memorization, schedule is PV. 
So if it's a schedule variance, it's EV minus PV. If it's a performance variance, it's EV over PV. Oops. Finally, our last two formulas that are at the completion is over one of our performance indicators. So if you're looking for schedule at completion, or if you're looking at cost at completion, it's going to be your CPI or your SPI. It's either going to be your budget at completion, or it's going to be your schedule at completion. So with these simple memorization tricks, I believe you should be in great shape to go forward and be very successful in the PMP and passing the questions on earned value. Now to conclude this module, this nugget, we're going to talk about what all of this means and see it in action to really drive home what earned value is and to enforce why earned value is such an important tool in your project manager's toolkit. So now we're finished with all the memorization and all the formulas and all the, this, the acronyms. Now it's time to see earned value in action. Now it's time to see why earned value is such an important tool in your project manager's toolkit. So I produced a graph here that presents my current project picture. The straight line through the middle of my graph is my baseline, my PV line. I am at month three in my project and we're seeing my project is not doing very well. We're seeing my earned value is only 3,800. So although I should be completing $4,500 worth of project delivery because my estimates were a little over, because my team is not working as efficiently, maybe there are some learning curve issues, maybe there's some ramp up times, I'm not getting full value for my team. My team is delivering a little under planned performance that my earned value is only 3,800. And unfortunately, human resources were not able to give me the exact resources that I was looking for. I'm getting more expensive resources, so the project is costing me a little more money. My AC is $5,000. So I take that and I start to use these three values and put it into my formulas. So I do my cost variance, 3,800. My EV, mine is my AC which is 5,000, and I get a value of negative 1,200. And we'll come back to what a negative 1,200 means in just a moment. I do my same for my schedule variance. 3,800 minus my PV, which is 4,500, equals negative 700. I do the same for my cost performance indicator. My EV, 3,800 over my AC, 5,000 gives me a cost performance indicator of 0.76. I do my schedule performance indicator again, EV, 3,800 over my PV, which is 4,500, gives me 0.84. Again, the actual application of the formulas is very simple. EV is always first, 3,800, 3,800, 3,800, 3,800. If it's cost, I look at my AC, minus 5,000. If it's a cost performance indicator, over 5,000. If it's schedule, I look at my PV, so it's 4,500 minus. If it's schedule performance, it's over. So now I have my cost variance, my schedule variance, my cost performance indicator, my schedule performance indicator. I'm going to use those to calculate my last two set of numbers. So I want to know my estimate at completion is my budget at completion, which is $10,000. So $10,000 over my CPI, 0.76. And I get a startling number, 13157. That tells me that all things being equal, if my project continues to progress in this fashion, my project isn't going to cost $10,000. My project is going to cost up here at $13,157. So this is my new revised estimate to complete for my project. And I go on and I do my same for my schedule. So my schedule of completion is my original plan value. I plan to be done in six months for the project. 
I put that over my scheduled performance indicator of 0.84, and I get 7.1. So that's telling me my project is not going to be done at the six month. My project is actually going to be done just beyond the seven month point. So this is telling me my project is going to be a little over a month late, and this is telling me my project is going to be a little over $3,000 over budget. That's earned value in action. That's taking the facts from your project. Fact, fact, fact from your project, applying the earned value information, and allowing us to assess what impact the current facts that I have in my project of being $3,800 delivered with an actual cost of $5,000 tells me my project is going to be over budget by the tune of a little over $3,000. That tells me my project is going to be late by the tune of a little over a month. That's earned value. That's tremendous value to you, the project manager, to assess the true health of your project. It's combining the cost, it's combining the schedule, and it's combining the work that's done on your project to allow you to truly assess what the project delivery scenario is going to be. So putting this all together, what does this all really mean? We saw two very meaningful numbers on the graph. We're going to be a little over $3,000 over budget, and we're going to be a little over a month late. But more specifically, we had cost variance of negative 12,000, we had a schedule variance of negative 700, we did a cost performance indicator of 0.76, and we had a schedule performance indicator of 0.84. Either of the variances, cost or schedule, if it's negative, is bad. In our case, both their cost variance was bad, which is telling us the project is costing more than we want it to. The project is costing more than the budget allows for. Schedule variance, negative, telling us the project is going to take longer than planned. The project is going to take longer than original schedule. Same thing applies to the performance indicators, either cost or schedule. If it's less than one, it's bad. My CPI was 0.76. That's bad. The SPI, 0.84, is bad. You're getting the same information from the performance indicators as the variances. One is not going to be good and the other is bad, cost versus schedule. But the cost variance is going to allow you to assess on a unit value how bad it is. The CPI and the SPI is going to allow you to take that number forward, take it into our budget at completion and schedule at completion to create our forecasts. How negative is bad? how less than one is bad, the farther they vary away from that magical zero or away from that magical one point is going to be the degree of badness, if I can use such a terminology. I can't say negative 1,200 is moderately bad, averagely bad, or excessively bad any more than I can say negative 700 is moderately normally or excessively bad. What you need to look at these is over time. You need to look at trends. So at week one, week two, week three of the project, my cost variance is trending to be more negative as the project progresses. That means my project is getting progressively worse versus my cost then variance or my schedule variance was a negative 1,200, but now it's improved to be negative 1,000 now it's improved to be negative 800, it means the project is getting better. Your project management actions are improving the project delivery situation. So you need to look at trends. The other component that you need to be very much aware of is earned value uses history to predict the future. All things being equal, all things being equal, this tells us that 
if nothing changes on our project, all things being equal, the project is not going to cost $10,000. The project is going to cost $13,157. All things being equal, nothing changing. The project is not going to complete in 7.1 months. The project is going to complete in, or sorry, in six months. The project is going to complete in seven months. Earned value uses history to predict the future. You have to assess whether you believe the history on your project is a good predictor for the future. Earlier in this nugget, I used the example that the project was tending below. My earned value was less than planned because I was having learning curve on the project. My teams did not have the skills they needed to complete their tasks on time. Therefore, they're completing the tasks behind time. My earned value was running less. My schedule variance was negative 700. But does this mean my project is destined to be the $13,000 or the $3,000 over budget and the one month late? That depends. If the history to predict the future is relevant, i.e. there is a learning curve problem, and as a project manager, there's nothing you can do about the learning curve problem, then yes, history is a good predictor for the future. And yes, it's likely that your project is going to cost $113,000 or $113, $13,000 and going to be a month late. If, on the other hand, you have taken actions as a project manager, maybe applied one of your risk management approaches and dealt with the learning curve issue, corrected the problem, then the history pre-learning curve is not going to be a good predictor for the future post-learning curve. So again, although earned value provides tremendous information to you as a project manager, you have to take it and apply it against all of the information you know about your project. Is the history a good predictor of the future? And more times than not, the answer is yes. The history is a good, predict good predictor for the future. If the estimates were bad for the first three months of the project, chances are the estimates are going to be optimistic or bad for the remainder of the project. Therefore, the history, optimistic bad estimates, is a good predictor for the future, and your project will be $3,000 over budget and a month late. If, the other hand, the underperformance was a result of learning curve, the history, learning curve, you have taken actions to correct the problems, then it is absolutely not a good predictor for the future. Then you can say, although earned value is predicting my project is going to be $3,000 late or $3,000 over budget, based on the fact that I have corrected the learning curve problem, I have applied my risk management approach, I've applied contingency, I've spent money on training, I believe the project should flatten out and the schedule variance should start to trend towards zero. And maybe, hopefully, it will actually even trend to the positive. So then you've been able to take actions to correct the schedule variance. You have probably not taken any actions to correct the cost variance. The cost variance is being caused by overpriced resources, more expensive resources on your project. But maybe, again, you can start to take sec separate corrective actions to deal with the cost variance. Negotiate with human resources, negotiate with senior management that why should my project be burdened with this extra charge when in fact it's not my fault, it's not my project's fault, etc., etc. So, variances, negative is bad. Performance indicator, negative one is bad. The key message I want you to take away on earned value is it uses the history to predict the future. More times than not, the history is a good predictor. But when you have taken corrective actions to fix the problems, you need to adjust your expectations for where the project is going to be. Look for your trends. Look for the improvement in your project picture. And with those improvements, you're going to see the project is going to not be delivered 7.1 months late. The next month into the project, it's only going to be delivering 6.8 month, 6 6 months over, and so on, as you trend backwards to the plan. Earned value is a tool in your toolkit. It's a very important, very powerful tool, but it can't be taken in isolation. No more than the reason we developed earned value to begin with, 
we can't take just schedule in isolation or just cost in isolation or just scope in isolation. We need to look at all of the facts for our project, earned value being one of the key facts, and assess whether or not you believe the information that earned value is going to give you. I hope that through this nugget and earned value analysis, I've given you enough information, enough practical experience with earned value analysis, how it combines the scope, the time, and the budget to give us the total project performance, and how that total project performance is such a valuable tool in your project manager's toolkit to assess, to validate, to determine how well your project is delivering, and to provide the information that you need to predict what the future of the project is going to be based on the history of how your project has been delivering. There is the unfortunate aspect to earned value that there is memorization. You have to memorize what all the terms are. EV, PV, AC, BAC, and so on, and so on, and so on. There's a series of formula that you have to memorize where your variance is equal to the earned value minus, and your performance indicators is equal to the earned value over. And you have your at completions, where it's a value over your performance indicators. There is an absolute element for memorization. That memorization is going to be critical for the questions on the PMP related to earned value analysis. The good news? Once you have your PMP and you're using earned value in a project delivery scenario, all of this literally goes away and you trust your tool. Your Microsoft project will give you your earned value information. You don't have to go through and do the calculations. You don't have to go through and memorize the, the, the formulas. That's all calculated for you and delivered to you as part of your project scheduling tool. Earned value uses the history to assess the project, your total project performance, and it predicts where the project will finish, whether it's going to be on time, on budget, how much it's going to be under, or how much it's going to be over. Earned value is probably the single most valuable tool you have in your project manager's toolkit and I highly encourage you to examine, review, and understand earned value analysis. As I said at the beginning of this nugget, it's probably the one tool in most project managers' toolkit that people don't use. They get bothered by, they get blown away by all of the formulas and all of the, the, the acronyms. Get beyond that, recognizing that your tool is going to do all of that work for you, and look at the results. It uses the history to predict the finish for the project. It lets you know whether your project is going to be on time, on budget, satisfying the scope, the time, the schedule, and the budget for your project. It's a very valuable tool in your project manager's toolkit. This concludes our nugget on earned value analysis. I hope this video has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.